Hey everyone. Hey everybody, what's up? So this is an older video I made on how to make your own exposure cheat sheets. They're very useful. You can make them on the fly and then you can reference them and just keep them in your camera bag. It's also going to help you understand the relationship between ISO, aperture and shutter speed better by creating these sheets. You can create one in just a matter of seconds. It's so easy to do, and you really don't even need to think about it. You just need to follow a pattern. So check out this video. I think you'll find it really helpful. And if you like it, please like and subscribe. Thank you. Exposure cheat sheets. Most of the time you'll take photographs in the same lighting as you have many times before. You can create little cheat sheets and recipe cards to store common settings for different lighting situations. For example, sunny day in this shade, or maybe in an overcast day. It can be a quick re visual reference to see what your options are. You can immediately see all the settings that would work. They may not be 100% accurate, but pretty close. You can always make an adjustment to your shutter speed or aperture to correct the balance. Here's how it works. First, you create a 9x9 rectangular grid. The top row is for aperture sizes, the left side is for ISO values, and the middle area is for shutter speeds. Then you write the apertures across the top. And you write the ISO values down the left side. Next, you write the description of the lighting scenario along the top. Perhaps it is a dark overcast day, for example. Next, you take a reference light meter reading using your camera. So let's say you get a reading of ISO 400 at 1 1 25th of a second at f8. Now you need to mark down the shutter speed in the correct row and column. We are at ISO 400 and at f8, so the shutter speed goes right there, 1 1 25th of a second. Step 7 is then to fill in the row. The values will double going left because the aperture is getting wider and letting in more light and they will cut in half going right because the aperture gets smaller. So you just put in the values, doubling them as you go left and cutting them in half as you go right. Now the row is full. The next step is to fill in a column. The values will double going down because the ISO is more sensitive and cut in half going up, just like this. Now that we have the column and the row filled in, we just need to fill in the rest. And again, the values are going to double going down or left, and they will cut in half going right or up. It's so easy to fill in, you don't really need to think about it, you can just follow the pattern. The numbers will also match diagonally going down from left to right. One thing you need to note, you don't need to fill in values that are not supported by your camera. For example, most cameras don't go over 1 8,000th of a second shutter speed, so I'm not going to fill in those spaces. Now the chart is done. You can create several of these charts and keep them in your camera bag for reference. Here's how you use the chart. You can select any combination of these settings for a given light condition and all of them will yield the correct exposure. So now you choose a setting that you need for the image you are trying to create. Think about your creative goal of the image, whether it is to freeze motion or create motion or maybe create a blurry background with a shallow depth of field. Or maybe you want to get everything in focus. Then you just choose the setting you want to use. Here's an example. Maybe you want a shot with everything in focus, but you don't want any camera shake in the image. So maybe you pick ISO 800 at 1 1 60th of a second at f16. Maybe you want the best quality image possible, so you pick ISO 100 and F8, and this gives you a shutter speed of 1 30th of a second. Maybe your lens only goes down to F4, 
and you want the fastest shutter speed, but your camera only supports one four thousandth of a second. So you could pick ISO 3200 at f4, and that would give you one thousandth of one four thousandth of a second. As an exercise, you should try to create a chart like this, and then try taking photos at different settings. It will help you learn and understand the effects of changing your settings. Observe the differences in the images to see the effects. That's all folks. Have fun practicing manual photography.